Hi everybody, just going to do you a quick review on my MT Street Fighter helmet uh, I bought the other day. Um, now I, I bought this style of helmet because I was really after a helmet, an open face helmet. Um, something with a flip up visor. Because well, for my classic bike, I, I normally ride with an open face helmet with a bubble visor. Um, but it's been so windy, and uh, when you're on a trip on the motorway, and uh, when you do a rear rob, it feels like the visor is going to get ripped off. And because I haven't done you a video that I have bought a BMW GS, don't judge me, just for for touring because it's too it's hard work on the the older bikes carrying all your gear. So I um, bought the GS and I thought I'd better upgrade my helmet because the one I bought was only a cheap crap one. Although this is only an entry class helmet. It's only £89. Um, you know, it's not like your Arias or your Shuri helmets that are £350-£400. But I wanted the ability to have an open face helmet but to put this on if we're in bad weather so I did do a trial ride the other day in on the windiest day ever in the pouring rain um, it was sunny when I went out although very windy so I drove down to my brothers that was 75 miles and I had the, the black visor on but I was going to pick up a tent which was on the way back let's say so I went down with the dark visor on, which was fine. Um, now people go on about the noise in this helmet. Now I ride with an open face helmet and it's, it's no different. Um, but I think the problem with riding the, with the GS because it's got the screen. Now I'm tr still trying to get the best level for me because it's got an adjustable screen. Because at the moment, I think the wind is hitting me just sort of at the top of the helmet where I've ridden bikes with without a screen and sports bikes with a low screen so the wind is designed you're in a bit of no man's land so the wind hits your visor and clears your visor um, and you're in a sort of it's hard to explain with a with a, the straight up visor on the GS this sort of zone you're in a lot of turbulence it feels like and this the noise i think people might be talking about is you get a lot where that turbulence is you get like a an oscillation on the screen and it vibrates a little bit through the top of the helmet if you put your head up so you're over the top of the screen and the visor clears really well because of that sort of double curvature um that noise sort of dissipates a little but you've got to remember this is classed as an open face helmet so you're not going to get that aerodynamic um, you still get a noise on a, on a full face helmet but um, you get more because of all the vents because it's well vented for the summer um, we'll talk about that a little bit in, the middle, in a minute so um, let me just show you how the helmet comes apart you've got a flip visor which with a locking mechanism there if you want to go open face, there's a little button on the bottom there. Pull that down, that just peels off. There's some nice heavy duty metal catches. So that puts it in open face mode. Um, you can, the peak has got two settings. Oh, that one, that one, not a lot, really. It depends on your riding position. You can take the peak off as well. It comes with a fitting on the top there for a GoPro mount, which come, comes in the box. And it also comes with these rubber covers to bung up the venting. You can see the exit vent on the top there. So the air sort of gets drawn in through here and through the front vents. Because it's, uh, you won't be able to see it. Might be able to, but inside the helmet you can see all the vent lines and there's a removable liner. Um, so you can see why it's so noisy because it's got all these air holes all the way around the outside. Everything's going to catch a bit of air. 
Now, because I knew it was going to be raining, I put these rubber vents in. Now, if you can see, it's a little bit distorted. Um, you've got to remember this is only a cheap helmet. Now, when you, you put those in and they're really hard to get in, you see that mesh that's in those holes there. There's four um, like locating pins on the back of that rubber thing. And you, when you put them in there, you've got to use like the handle of a screwdriver to get them to really pop in. But I think this is really an after, afterthought. Once you've taken that out two or three times, I think that the, you can imagine they're plastic, but so they're like a little raised tooth on the end. If you take them out two or three times, I think they'll probably be knackered. So I put them in because we're in, we're running into winter now. I thought I'm going to leave them in. I'm not going to take them out and show you. But if you can see the distortion, they don't fit that well. When they're on, they're on. But I really think after a couple of times of taking them in and out, they'll be knackered. But they do the job. No rain came in. The only rain I did get in was where I'm getting that turbulence over the top of my tank. And the rain was running up the visor rather than down and away. I was getting a bit of water coming in through the chin piece. And let me just show you where the... Um, a couple of people mentioned on YouTube about the visor being a poor fit. And I don't think it is a poor fit because this is an open face helmet. If you think there's a, like a rubber gate around here, when that clicks shut, you know, there's a chance you might get a bit of water coming in. Now, you see that lift there? When you shut it when you're riding, that is a good enough fit. Now, when you take the visor off, let me show you there, that, you turn that cam so it's in between one of those notches. And um, that turns that locking mechanism off and you can slip the visor up. And when you put it back in, Depending on, I think, whether you bought an aftermarket visor or you get a bit of movement in the fitting of this, it gives you three settings on having that tighter or looser, that gap. So you turn it an extra turn in on that cam, you get a, quite a big gap under there. But on the middle setting, you know, I'm driving 75, 80 mile an hour in, it was probably about force five, force six blowing on the motorway, all that turbulence from the lorries and the trucks. I got a, a little bit of water in there and it was pissing down. So it wasn't too bad, you know, on a summer's day, visor off, I think it will be fine. So what else to talk about? Fitting. Now when I, I was, there was a couple of these for sale on Facebook, brand new. The guys had bought them and they said they were too tight. Um, most of them were saying that they bought a, a medium for a 58. I can't remember what the size was. I'm a 58 and it said it was a medium, but my helmet and my other helmet is a large. And um, there was a guy on there saying that I'm a large. Um, in fact, you know, sorry, he's, he bought a, an extra large but he said it was way too tight. The helmet really was a large. And the guys that have bought mediums, they're saying you need to get the size up um, because they're, they're all like a size too small. Now, the trouble is, now I know when you buy a helmet, it's really got to be super tight. Now, if you're wearing a helmet every single day, like you're using it for commuting, um, the padding softens. So you really do need a helmet which is squashing your face. And I think probably if I was using this every day, because I bought an extra large for my large head. So I bought a size up. I think you probably would have to put up with the tightness if you're using it every day and that padding might soften. But it is quite a risk. Now I don't I don't ride that often. And this is it's a good fit. See, that's a good fit on my head. Now use your left hand because that's your clutch hand. And that is taking a bit of getting used to, but that button is easy to find with your gloves on and easy to click the lock in. 
So that's the fitting torque. Talk, talk. I don't know if you can see, you can see the quality of the lining. It's a really nice, comfortable fitting. It's got the the um, quick release buckle, which the strap is a little long. But once you get it to the size you want, you could always trim this down and burn the end off. Um, I was going to show you about visor changing. Now this is easy. Now I went out with the dark visor in. This helmet comes with two visors. This is the SV MT Street Fighter SV. It comes with two visors. Um, now I had that in my top box, and once the, it clouded over, although it's not a really dark tint, I thought I changed the clear visor. So I stopped under a bridge, put my waterproofs on, and um, changed the visor. Now this is how easy it is. You just turn that. You see those little knobs on there, they line up with a line at the top here. You just turn that halfway just off of the just off of the line so the lock isn't engaging and you literally you hear it click, just pull it out. And out she comes. Now to, to re-engage it, if you can look. You can see in there that's where you slide the new one in but what they don't tell you is there's a, a like a little um catchment in there so you can't just bang it in there because if you tip the helmet back that falls back and you can't see it and you could just slip it in i don't know if you can quite see that in this light you can just see it there that little engagement That catch. If you're desperate, the only petrol station there's a tank for the shell at far as I'm sure you've got. Oh, otherwise, nothing. Right, let me just shut the door. Right, so, if you've got your helmet in, you just return that fitting. So that point is touching the arrow at the top. Ah, see, even showing you, I've missed, probably because I looked up at the door, I've missed the slot. I've missed it again, probably because I haven't got my glasses on. There you go. When you hear that click, it's re engaged. That's how easy it is to change the helmet, change the visors, right? To re engage the mouthpiece, you put the two hooks in the bottom slot, just lift it up, and it goes. Clear visor in. Um, so I did 170 miles of this on the other day. No problem at all. Because of that high back shape lift on there to let all that air out, I did find it was a bit drafty around the back of my neck. But uh, I made sure I put my scarf a bit higher when I when I changed the visor. Um, you don't get any pull up on there. If you would think if you were driving and the air cuts in front of that, it doesn't pull your head up at all. It's, it's nice and light. You hardly feel you've got it on really. The vision through here, I don't know if you've ever worn a VR, if you feel like you're in a VR, because there's a little bit of refraction on that seam along the bottom. And it's just like wearing my son's VR, when you're looking around. And it does look a little bit like Master Chief's helmet. You can get the gold visor like Master Chief's. Um, I think there's anything else to say really, apart from for an 89 quid, entry level adventure star helmet although it's called street fighter i think if you was on a bike with without a visor or a sports bike with a low screen the water dissipation on the on in heavy duty rain with the wind is fantastic um so i'm quite happy with it i wear earplugs anyway when i'm going on the motorway because something wrong with this ear and the noise of the tires really hurts but you should wear ear defenders anyway that's another story. So that is the MT Street Fighter. Quite cool shape. 
in a green colour. Any questions? Fitting, visor changing, uh, front mount, sizing, ping me a message. Very good, bye.